Hello, my name is John Roche, and today I come before you to discuss the nature of graphics design, and how it can be used against you. Of course, I don't mean you specifically, rather how it can be used to sway the bulk of society, which is a category you happen to fall under. Sinister phrasing aside, I do intend to discuss the various methods through which graphics design can target someone without them ever knowing. These broad methods include complexity of design, colors present, and how often a design is shown. Zenner from Visual Communications Quarterly in 2001 found that while most respondents preferred a high quality ad, over a third opted for the low quality design. It should be noted that this preference for low quality design was predominantly, though not entirely, from older participants. Additionally, the terms high and low quality can be deceptive. They do not mean that designs are poorly or well done. Rather, the terms refer to their complexity. A high quality design would be more modern and complex, likely including greater line work and subtle color variation to enhance contrast and help draw more focus to the piece. Whereas a low quality design would be more simple and traditional in style. The reason that I am discussing this is to demonstrate that if you see a certain type of advertisement, like for instance a higher quality one, you can make an assumption as to what demographic may be targeted. This is a tool that companies are almost certain to use due to its reliability and broad efficiency. Uger from the International Journal of Eurasia Social Sciences in December of 2019 discusses the use of color and its value as it has the ability to draw one's focus to specific areas and simultaneously act as a symbol with its own unique meanings. Uger comes to the conclusion that no one factor of a design was intrinsically able to be claimed as any more important than any other part. For these reasons, color is just as crucial as any other element in a design. There are broad meanings behind certain colors that the bulk of society will rapidly associate to the design it is used in. Now, whether such an action is conscious or unconscious is debatable. However, it is almost certain to occur. For instance, most people tend to associate the color red with some form of fashion, whether that is love, anger, or something else entirely, is very debatable, but almost always a form of passion. Thus, if one were to add red to a design, it may imply that the subject in question is to be cared about. For example, advertisements and posters asking for blood donations are often red and white. The white is present likely to imply cleanliness and lends itself to the medical aesthetic due to, of course, doctor's garments and hospitals being predominantly colored white. Most would logically assume these advertisements include red as, a, as the subject matter, blood is red. And while that is certainly a contributing factor, it is not the only reason that red tends to be present in such commercials. The use of red is also capable of implying that donating blood is important, that it is something to care about and be passionate for, as, especially with what's going on these days, we always need more blood. <laughs> Whereas if something were in blue, it may be an attempt to calm a viewer and imply that the subject matter is not necessarily something to worry about or fear. For instance, many advertisements for medicine will use a combination of white and blue. The white is very prevalent because, as previously mentioned, it is associated with sanitation and cleanliness and various parts of the medical aesthetic. The blue is commonly used when an advertiser wants to sue the viewer. With a new medicine, this may imply that one would no longer need to be terribly worried about their ailment as a solution is now available. 
However, this does also imply that the consumer can only relax when they obtain that specific product, which in turn does mean that they cannot necessarily relax due to the issue, but rather if they do get that solution. In the, in the Journal of Consumer Research on January 2019, Janice Wesky discusses how mere exposure to an advertisement can increase one's liking and trusting of said idea or product. This concept is fundamentally repetition. The reason I'm citing this source is to explain that should an advertisement be faulty or fundamentally unappealing to you for any reason, there is still a possibility that a central concept of graphics design, repetition, of the message, color, design, elements present, or the advertisement as a whole can still convince you to appreciate it, at least to some extent. Now this heightened appreciation may only be a marginal effect, for instance, shifting one's opinion from hate to tolerate, but such an effect would still be noteworthy in some senses. Let us say that a group is discussing a company, and one person in this group passionately despises that company. This person is likely to argue against the company's reputation, and in doing so, may convince a few others in the group to spite that company as well. However, it is possible that if exposed to enough of the company's advertisements, this person's spite may simmer enough so that they would never speak about the company negatively, even if they don't necessarily support it. While such may not be enough to convince the most passionate member of the group to buy from the company, it may prevent the passionate person from persuading others, thus keeping potential customers, uh, while not losing any, and being a net positive, of course, for the company itself. Overall, graphics design is able to communicate information in a relatively subtle manner and able to, for the most part, seamlessly target various groups of people in order to convey specific messages and sway their opinions, often without them even realizing it's occurring. All of this is possible through clever uses of color, inciting specific feelings in people, varying complexity of design, targeting certain de demographics, and persistent advertising, decreasing negative reactions towards the company or product in question. In light of this, I would suggest you give a little more focus to the next advertisement you come across, because it might just be made for you.